drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hi everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world we have been discussing about the different annealing processes in this lecture too we will continue our discussion further into other annealing processes to begin with let's discuss about diffusion annealing process diffusion annealing is alternatively known as homogenizing annealing process the basic idea behind diffusion annealing is that uh, there is non uniformity within the material inherently during casting or solidification processes in order to remove those ununiformities if we provide high enough temperature such that diffusion is fast enough then the non uniformity can be removed and homogenization can take place therefore diffusion annealing is basically exposing the material to high temperature for homogenization why would we like to remove the non uniformity because the presence of non uniformity leads to brittleness and loss in toughness of the material so by undoing the non uniformity basically we get a more ductile material and something which is tougher okay so what exactly is happening during diffusion annealing during diffusion annealing we actually heat the material to quite a high temperature because the idea is that we need to increase the diffusion rate so we heat it to 1000 to 1200 degree celsius and we hold it at that temperature for sufficiently long time which is ranging from 10 to 20 hours and once the process is complete we slowly cool it back why don't we drastically cool it if we drastically cool it there might be development of internal strains and we don't want that so we slowly cool it as i said that the diffusion which is occurring at such a high temperature and long time leads to homogenization and the disadvantage is that since the temperature is quite high and uh, elongated exposure to that high temperature leads to coarsening of grains fine really large grains are obtained as a result of diffusion annealing and therefore in order to counter this further heat treatment processes needs to be carried out in order to refine grain grain refinement needs to be done after diffusion annealing in addition to this process in addition to the idea that coarsening takes place during diffusion annealing the fact that the temperature is so high leads to large scale scaling scaling takes place scaling is basically surface oxidation thick layers of oxidation takes place on the surface which needs to be peeled away and that leads to a loss of material okay and finally it the diffusion annealing process is normally carried out in hypo eutectoid and eutectoid steels next let us see the process annealing process process annealing is carried out below a1 temperature that is below the lower critical temperature and we heat it to that temperature hold it for sufficiently long time and then cool it what this does is basically it reduces the hardness and increases the ductility of the specimen why do we need this this is a intermediate step during a large number of fabrication steps so if you want to roll a material give it large amount of deformation then beyond a certain point cold rolling cannot take place because it has so much strain within it it cannot be deformed any further in such a scenario process annealing is done on the material so as to reduce the hardness and increase ductility thereby making it feasible for the material to undergo further deformation okay and 
the, as I said this is used mainly to counter excessive hardness and brittleness so that further processing can be carried out thereby the name process annealing it is part of a set of processes that is uh, supposed to be carried out right finally recrystallization annealing is uh, taking place in a body which is heavily work, uh, cold worked and we heat it to the recrystallization temperature hold it there for certain time and then slowly cool it what happens is the highly cold worked material first undergoes recovery in which there is certain loss in the internal strain thereafter when we reach the recrystallization temperature the old highly strained grains give rise to new strain free fine grains so basically as we had already discussed this before we had after rolling let's say we have highly elongated grains fine so when we reach the recrystallization temperature what will happen is nucleation of new grains will occur and after sufficient time this highly strained elongated grains is replaced by equiaxed grain free uh, strain free fine grains okay so this is basically recrystallization basically there is recrystallization occurring over here and it is occurring at a nominally high temperature thereby recrystallization annealing is taking place what it does is this is highly strained material and highly deformed material very high strength high strength but low ductility what happens after recrystallization is the strength decreases marginally less strength okay but the toughness and the ductility ductility increases toughness increases this material the highly strained material would not be used for any practical purpose this recrystallization and leeling gives us a newly formed crystal structure a rather microstructure which is ductile and sufficiently tough as well as has good strength for application okay recrystallization temperature now what temperature do we need to put the material to for recrystallization and leeling to occur will depend on several factors including what is the composition if the material is a pure metal then the recrystallization temperature that the temperature required for recrystallization will be low allowing the material increases the recrystallization temperature if we have large amount of cold work done on the material before we are trying to recrystallize then the recrystallization temperature will be less because there is a lot of strain and the driving force is already there we just need to give it a little push so even increasing the temperature slightly leads to recrystallization whereas if the material is not sufficiently cold worked then it requires a lot of energy or temperature for the recrystallization to actually occur as well as holding time if we have more time then the recrystallization temperature can be less we can keep it at lower temperature and provide it more time for recrystallization to occur if we want the recrystallization to happen quickly then we would rather have the temperature high between time and temperature temperature has a much more pronounced effect on recrystallization rate than time okay so recrystallization increase in temperature marginally leads to drastically drastic decrease in the amount of time required for recrystallization that is what i mean okay so today's lecture what we saw is we started by diff uh, diffusion annealing we saw diffusion annealing is basically to remove heterogeneity and make the material homogeneous carried out at really high temperature 
we discussed process annealing which is a intermediate step so as to recover the ductility thereby allowing the material to have further deformation carried out and recrystallization annealing is basically uh, on cold work materials if we give it sufficient temperature and time then strain free grains are produced out of highly strained cold work grains let us revisit the curve in which we had shown the different annealing processes and see those things again as we discussed diffusion annealing is taking place at highest temperature okay then recrystallization annealing is below a1 process annealing is also below a1 so these two does not have any phase change taking place new grains are formed in this recrystallization annealing process annealing is basically to improve the toughness and uh, recover ductility diffusion annealing remove the heterogeneity whereas full annealing is taking place in uh, hyper eutectoid steel whereas partial annealing is taking place in hyper eutectoid steel this hyper eutectoid steel full annealing is above the upper critical temperature whereas partial annealing for hyper eutectoid steel is between upper and lower critical temperature this brings an end to the discussion on the different annealing processes next class we'll discuss about other kind of heat treatment processes till then have a great day goodbye